How's it going everyone? It's Sam. Today I want to give you an update on the Russia situation, why this week should be a really interesting week in crypto, and talk about some of the increasing sanctions and some of the increasing uh, restrictions that are being put on Russia. So we're going to talk about all that and a lot of it is being tied to crypto right now. Like the world events, I don't know if they've ever been so tied to crypto and I think part of that is just because of the increased uh, volatility or the increased restrictions on the financial system. So we've seen a lot of countries freezing accounts, a lot of countries restricting people's money. And I think that puts us at an in, uh, puts us in an interesting situation going forward for what this means for crypto, not just being a really volatile asset that people think that will just go to the moon, but actually something that provides a lot of really obvious use case scenarios for people. Uh, so we're going to go through this. If you guys don't mind hitting the like button and subscribe button, I really do appreciate that. There's also a link down there to BlockFi in case you want interest rate on your crypto. If you're outside the U.S., you can still get that up to about 9%. And if you're inside the U.S., it's still a great place to buy crypto. There's also a BlockFi credit card that gives you crypto back. And this is one of the only two credit cards that I use. So check those links out underneath the video. Now, first of all, I just want to say I am going to leave a link to this tweet underneath the video, but you can actually send them you can send them crypto and they've raised last time i checked about 13 million dollars in about a day so a lot of money is flowing in to help the ukraine situation even gavin wood who started up uh, polka dot who's the founder of polka dot he said that if you post a dot address i'll contribute five million dollars myself so a lot of people in support of this and a lot of people realize that this is a huge step for ukraine but also the world and crypto that you know a country is trying to is trying to accept donations through cryptocurrency and this is just a massive step also we are seeing some other people in the crypto industry giving back you know ftx ceo sam bankman fried said earlier this week that he's giving every ukrainian 25 dollars each um, i think that a lot of people are trying to help out in different ways even elon musk uh, someone from ukraine said hey we know that you're trying to get to mars but can you help us with Ukraine, with the Ukrainian situation. He said Starlink services are now active in Ukraine, more terminals on route. So he's giving them uh, high speed internet essentially because they have had some issues with their internet. I mean, Russia's invading, probably taking down uh, cell phone towers and whatever else uh, that you need for internet. And they are providing now services. So everyone can have that. So really cool. Everyone coming together, I think, and trying to help out. So like I said, this is a pivotal time. We have one government in Canada that is attempting to freeze crypto donations. On the other hand, we have a government asking for crypto donations. So only one of the two are possible. Other countries should take note and follow Ukraine's lead. You don't have to fight it. You can just embrace it and it can help out people in your country. It can help out your government. It can help out uh, creating a frictionless payment system across the world in seconds. A lot of people don't un understand that yet. Now, just a couple updates on Russia. First of all, there are a lot of countries that are making changes because they think what Russia is doing is just uh, unbelievable. So England will not play Russia in an international football match for the un for, uh, for the foreseeable future. So just kind of showing that they're on Ukraine side and what Russia is doing is just terrible. The European Un the European Union is closing the airspace to Russia, and this just came out, I believe, a few hours ago. This is a big step uh, because they're. This is going to throw off all their uh, airplanes coming in and out. Also, BP is offloading nearly a 20% stake in Russia's Rosneft. So they're going to uh, unload this even though this is they're selling it at a loss, I believe. They said that's going to be a material loss for them. But they just were facing increased uh, pressure to offload this. And it is a Russian-controlled control, oil company. So a lot of... A lot of companies coming together and showing their support. Also, they are now taking Russian banks off the SWIFT cross-border network. So this is what a lot of the banks use to, uh, to send messages or send money across the world. And this has been kind of something that they were discussing whether they want to do for a couple different reasons. One, it's going to hurt the countries that they do business with because everyone wants to show their support, but they don't want to be hurt themselves, it seems like, all the different countries. So a lot of different countries rely on Russia for trade and natural gas. So they didn't really want to take this next step. It also gets them off of using SWIFT, which is uh, something that they don't really want to do because 
they might not come back. Uh, they might do their own thing from now on. So first of all, they, they had five different things they did. So first of all was to take them off of the SWIFT system. They didn't say how many banks they were removing from the system, but they said an undisclosed number of banks. Also, they are going to paralyze some of the, the assets of the Russian central bank. They're going to commit to taking measures to limit the sale of citizenship or the golden passports, which let wealthy Russian citizens or Russians connected to the government become citizens of other countries and gain access to their financial systems. They're also going to launch a transatlantic task force to ensure effective implementation of all sanctions, which primarily aims to freeze the overseas assets of Russian officials elites and their family members and the last thing they're going to commission plans to increase coordination against disinformation and other forms of hybrid warfare so they're trying to do a lot they're they're really upping the stakes and upping the sanctions and some of the restrictions that they're putting on russians and some of the wealthy there and they say if a wealthy individual is concerned that their accounts may be frozen due to sanctions, they can simply hold their wealth in Bitcoin in order to be protected from such actions. So there's another case for cryptocurrency, not just donations, but people trying to get around the fact that they're going to have their assets frozen. A couple other things. The Ukrainian president says that he doesn't expect much from Monday's meeting, but let them try. So the Ukrainian president does have a meeting with Russia on Monday. It's going to be interesting to see if things get resolved or if they take step forwards or uh, they take a step back, if they can come to any kind of agreement. So it sounds like they're not going to, but it's a possibility. And then we do have to talk about the fact that we do have the Fed rate decision in a couple of weeks. So right now, 76% of people surveyed are thinking we're only going to get a quarter point raise, which is down from where it was before. So this is kind of obviously more finance related, but uh, this is in due or this is due to the conflict i believe so it's it's an unprecedented time now i think like i said there's more of a reason to hold cryptocurrency than ever we are seeing a little bit of red today maybe that's just some uncertainty about the week to come the weeks to come but we are seeing some red in the market but i think this is a great time to be dollar cost averaging i mean we're seeing things that we've never seen probably never thought that we'd be seeing a couple of years ago if you had told people that there's going to be a country that was embracing Crypto is legal tender, another country that is trying to freeze people's bank accounts and everyone's turning to crypto, and then a different country that is accepting crypto as payment. It's, it's just crazy the, the opportunities that we have today in crypto. And the fact is that crypto has been sideways for a year. So just an interesting time. I did a video yesterday breaking apart a lot of the different bear cases right now. So if you guys want to see that, I'll put that along with the video that I made yesterday on what I'm buying right now. So thank you guys so much for watching this. I really do appreciate it. There's that link underneath the video to BlockFi. And then also, in case you want to make a, do a donation to Ukraine. And I'll see you in the next video. Bye.